Last time we just started talking about, the get ready for this thing is a bit, uh, it has a few weird questions in it, but essentially in grade nine, the limit of what you did was a monomial times a binomial or a trinomial or we'll put some kind of polynomial, right? More than one term. So something like 2x times x plus 3 or even, you know, 3x times x squared plus x minus 2. Right? That's the limit of what you did. And you, you looked at it several ways, and we looked at modeling it with algebra tiles last time. Um, you can also model it with, uh, we don't have to model it, like by the time you get to grade 12, you're not going to model it with tiles. Um, a couple different other models you can use, or one other model you can use is called an area model, and you may have done that last time. Essentially, it relates to what you learned in grade 3. Like the first thing it says here is, Think back to when you learned how to multiply 3 times 12 in grade 3. That one you probably just memorized at some point. But you learned to do long multiplication. Probably someone said, write this down, write the 12, put the 300, put a line, put a time sign over here. What procedure did you follow if you didn't happen to know it was 36 right off the bat? What did you do? You went to 3 times what first? 3 times 2, and you wrote down a 6. And then you wrote, and then you looked at 3 times what? Really, you did three times one, but really what you were doing is they said put a zero first and then do three times one. Really, what you're doing is not three times one. You're doing three times ten, right? Putting a zero and then doing three times one is like doing three times ten, right? And you said it's three, so it's 36. Essentially, what you were doing is you were splitting the 12 up into two pieces. You're splitting it up into the two and the ten. So you're multiplying it as two parts separately. You can do 3 times t 12 by thinking of 3 times 10 plus 2. Or in other words, multiplying the two things separately. Multiplying 3 times 10 and 3 times 2. That's all you did when you did this, and this seemed really easy. This is just writing it a different way. Or if you're a visual person, you can think about it like the area of a rectangle. Multiplying 3 times 12 is like working out the area of a rectangle. Right, if you have a rectangle that is, uh, it's a bit smaller, but if it's 3 times 12, that's obviously 36. The area is the two things multiplied. If you split the, the 12 into, instead of 12, instead of 10 plus 2, like it is right here, it's two different areas, but you can work out the area of each one, 30 and 6, right? You go 3 times 10 and 3 times 2. That's what we're going to work on. That's what we're going to use as a model for multiplying things where we don't happen to know one of them. If you didn't happen to know that this was a 10, let's say it was x. If you had 3 times x plus 2, right? Instead here, instead of 3 times um, 10 plus 2, let's say it was 3 times x plus 2. In grade 9, you learned, well, you could represent it with algebra tiles. Or you can represent it's a little quicker to represent it with an area model, which is sort of the same thing. Or you can use what's called the distributive property, which is just saying, well, it's got to be 3 times that and 3 times that. It's 3 times each term inside the brackets there. Because then you'd have 3x and 6. Or like this, 3 times x is 3x, 3 times 2 is 6. So either way you look at it or represent it, it gives you the same thing. All right, I'll leave you to do that your turn on your own sometime. The new thing this year is doing binomial times binomial or binomial times trinomial. So extending it from where you have more than one term in both of these things, right? So it's not just a single term times something with more than one term. We're extending this year to, you know, polynomial times polynomial. Okay, polynomial times polynomial. So you have more than one term. So you have x plus 2 times, uh, whoops, 2x minus 3 or, or even something like x plus 2 times x squared minus 2x plus 3. It's hard to represent if you're doing x squared times another x, what is that going to give you? If you do x, if, if we have something where we're multiplying x times x squared, what is that going to give us? It's going to give us x cubed, and as soon as we get into cubed, it's hard to represent it with tiles, right? With tiles, you need... Um, if you have x cubed, you'd have to have a cube that's sticking out of the page. And so we're going to go beyond that. You can still use an area model, even though in reality it would start to seem like a volume model. All right. You can think about it with numbers first. When you learned how to do 12 times 13 or something like that, somebody said, put the two numbers like that, put a time sign over there. Think about the process you went through. You first of all did what? If you're doing 13 times 12, 
You did two times three. And then you did, so you wrote down, and you wrote down six. And then you went, what'd you do next? Two times one, which was really two times ten. So you said it's twenty. And then you did, what was the next one you did? This one times that three. Except it's really ten times three. So it's thirty. And then what was the last thing you did? I know you didn't write it like this probably underneath. What was the last thing you did here? You probably did that one times that one, which is really 10 times 10, which was 100. What does that all add up to? 156. That's what it is, right? 13 times 12. How many parts were there in the answer? There was 1, 2, 3, 4, right? When we had up above here a two-digit number times a one-digit number, there was two pieces to the answer, right? 2 times 1. If you have a single term times two terms, you're going to have two pieces to the answer. Well, we have to, the first thing we have to realize here is if we have two parts to each of the things we're multiplying, two things here, two things here, how many parts are there going to be to the answer? How many parts are there going to be? How many different numbers did we end up with here? We end up with four, right? It's obvious why when you look at an area model, when you look at an area model, if you if you make the 12 into... 10 plus 2, and you make this uh, 13 into 10 plus 3, it's obvious that there's, why there's uh, four different parts, right? We had the 10 times 10, which was 100. We had the 10 times 3, which was 30. We had the 10 times 2, which was 20, and the 2 times 3, which was 6. You can also do it with the distributive property, which is just working with it like this. If you split these numbers up and you have 10 times 10, and we also did 10 times... 3, and we did 2 times 10, and 2 times 3. Essentially, you have to do each term in this one times each term in the other one here. All right? And you can work through it. You should be able to do this both ways. We're going to extend that to working with polynomials here. Okay? You already wrote definitions for those, or you already tested yourself on what those mean, but you can write some definitions there. We're going to extend it. This is multiplying a mono monomial by a binomial, something you did in grade 9, but it's worth starting to think about here. When we say area model, I'm not thinking necessarily that you're doing the tiles. So I'm not thinking you're doing this, you know, uh, x. It's okay if you do, but at some point it'd be good. That's using algebra tiles, which is fine. You know, x squared plus 3x. Drawing it pretty roughly here. But what I'm thinking is you're going to use an area model where you you have a rectangle. And you say, if I'm doing x times x plus 3, I'm going to split up the x plus 3 into x and 3. So i got two parts to my answer. And then if I want to know what this area is, i got x times x. What is that? x squared. And then if I want x times 3, this one, x times 3, what's that? 3x. So my answer is x squared plus 3x. I know a lot of you were telling me in the past that, well, I can see what it is. It's x times x and x times 3. That's fine, right? x times x plus 3 is x times x plus 3 times x, or in other words, x squared plus 3x, okay? When you move on to starting to work with binomial times binomial, you got to think of what this is, and when you draw a rectangle for an area model, think about how many parts are there going to be, right? So think about how many sections are going to be. If you have two things here and two things here, so if you have the x plus 3 here and the x plus 2 here, you got to split it up into the parts, x and 2, x and 3. So how many parts are we going to have? How many parts to that answer? Four. Four, right? You can do each part here and say x squared, 3x, 2x, and 6. Now you can look to see if you can combine any of those because some of them are going to be things you can combine together <coughs> right in this case this one and this one you can combine together so I'm going to write it out first x squared plus 3x plus 2x plus 6 but we can combine these together and say plus 5x so the simplest way to write that is x squared plus 5x plus 6 you can get it using the distributive property as well right that's just knowing that you have to uh, 
multiply each of the things here. So this x times each of these and this 2 times each of these. Right? So if, you're, if, you, if it helps to draw lines, this and this. Right? There's going to be four parts to your answer. Same thing. x squared, 3x, 2x, 6. And you can combine them together. The combining these two terms together, it kind of goes along with if you think about this two-digit number we multiplied back up here. When we multiplied this two-digit number here, we had one of the things that we came up with was ones, units. Two of the terms we came up with were um, tens, right? These two tens we got, we put together. We had 156, right? When you say 156, it's like 150 and 6. You can combine those two together because they're the same type of thing. They're both tens. It's the same thing here when we had, when we had, uh, when we had a, a, a variable times a constant, we ended up with an x term. We can combine those together. All right. So you need to you need to finish working through this section, making sure you can do this. You have to think about things like what happens if they're both x's here or both negatives here. What happens if one is a negative and one's a positive? Let's think carefully about that. Check your answers with somebody. If you want to use Algebra tiles as well. We're going to wait till next time to do some more algebra tiles. But And then think about what happens if you have a binomial times a trinomial. Like if you have two terms here times three terms here, think about how many sections your area model is going to have when you're working on that. Okay? And just, again, make sure you're checking as you go. Okay? Then we can start looking at some algebra tiles stuff. You can do this in either order you want. You can work with algebra tiles first and then go back to the other stuff. Or you can go in the order that it's in here. All right. Can we uh, can we get going on that, please? Make sure you're asking questions if needed. Work with your group. Encourage your group to stay on task so we can get this done. We really should be trying to get this section done today.